Hey everybody, today I thought I'd do something a bit different than my usual bitching and moaning about how fucked and stupid the world is, and focus instead on something I actually like. So today I'm presenting you with uh, a list of my top 10 favorite characters from film and television. Now these are my personal favorites, and I'm making no pretense here of objectivity. This is not based on which characters were the most revolutionary or most original or anything of that nature. These are just my personal favorites. Number 10, Cartman from South Park. Eric, did you just take a crap on my desk? What's up? What's up? The idea behind Cartman was Matt Stone and Trey Parker marveling at old episodes of All in the Family and lamenting that a character like Archie Bunker couldn't be created today because the PC culture would totally reject him. They challenged themselves to create such a character and realized they could get away with it if he were an animated eight-year-old, uh, so hence Cartman was born. What I like about this character is that he's a grab bag of extremes. On one hand, he's so innocent that he doesn't know that girls don't have balls. On the other hand, he's so vicious and evil that he'll murder your parents and feed them to you if you cross him. On one hand, he's largely ignorant about how the world works, but on the other hand, he's a master manipulator who always seems to know just enough to turn every situation to his advantage. He actually kind of reminds me of Donald Trump in that he doesn't need a deep or complex understanding of the ways of the world in order to make the world bow to his feet. He can see a bunch of people getting riled up by an issue and immediately know how to play that crowd, even if he's completely clueless about the issue itself. Whether he's trying to exterminate the Jews or just trying to maintain his social justice warrior persona, uh, he's never in it for the cause. He's always in it for himself and always uh, for his own advantage and to gratify his own ego. And rarely does any idea or cause beyond himself even factor into the equation. He may be a master exploiter, but... What can I say? He's exploited his way onto this list. I'm just glad he's not real or he'd probably kill me for making him number 10. Number nine, V from V for Vendetta. The only verdict is vengeance. A vendetta held as a votive, not in vain. For the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. Now, I have never read the uh, source material, the Alan Moore comics that the movie was based on, so I had no idea going into this film what sort of character V was. But as soon as he made his alliterative V-themed speech after saving Natalie Portman's character Evie, I was just totally hooked. It was so fascinating to have an action movie protagonist who was not only smart and whimsical and verbose, but who also occupied the moral gray area of being a terrorist against the state. Now, I like action movies just fine, but usually the protagonist of such films are just like the strong, silent type. Big, rippled muscle men who let their guns or their fists do the talking. It was great to have a character who was loquacious and even philosophical. Whereas most action movie protagonists take no sort of overt political stance, V is all about politics, and his politics are rather extremist. The government is evil, and the people must overthrow it and restore freedom to the land. And during the course of the movie, V makes several morally questionable decisions, but you can always see the intent and the internal logic behind it. This ain't your daddy's action hero, and that's a good thing, because your daddy's action hero is a boring, vanilla, simple-minded fuck. V more than earns his spot at number nine. Number eight, Carol from The Walking Dead. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. <laughs> Just, just look at the flowers. This is a character that I originally had very little interest in. Uh, just a battered housewife, always crying and never seeming to stand up for herself. She was basically a character that existed on the show solely to be pitied. And that never fascinates me much uh, as a character. But holy shit, did they flip the script as that show went on. Her persona as the ultimate motherly type uh, transformed from her actual identity, 
when she first appeared on the show to just a mask that she wears to hide what an absolutely vicious person she becomes. She has no compunction about killing anyone at any time if she believes it protects her and her group. Even if there's a threat from within her group, she's the one who takes the initiative to stifle it quickly and brutally. What I love about this character is her outward appearance of weakness, which hides this grizzled and sometimes almost demented pragmatism. Life in the zombie apocalypse is, for her, just an equation. If anyone poses even the slightest threat to her or those under her protection, she will not hesitate to end them. And then she's off to go bake some cookies. I love that. Carol is deeply worthy of the number eight spot on my list. Number seven, Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. Can you help me get my ball down from the roof, Dad? Sure thing, honey. You want me to get the cat down? No, thanks. Now, considering I'm talking about one of the most iconic characters of all time, I don't think I need to say too much about this pick. He's just really fucking funny, especially in the golden age of The Simpsons, which I personally think runs from about season three through maybe about season 10. Now, Homer is obviously an idiot, but he's a highly quotable idiot, and sometimes he even stumbles onto a source of idiot wisdom that could only honestly be uttered by a character who's adult, like the famous Homer quote, to alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Now, a smart character could utter that line, but it would be with a wry awareness of the irony and thus not sincere. When Homer says it, he's sincere in the sentiment and blatantly unaware of the paradoxical yet still somehow true nature of the quote. And that's what makes Homer a great character. He's relatable to the idiot in all of us, but he also provides a very earnest and sometimes even sort of poignant way of looking at issues that we all face, despite being a total retard. He's sort of like a less inspirational Forrest Gump, only he doesn't have the hots for a drug addict and he certainly doesn't have the magically positive impact on everyone else's life that he touches that you see in the Forrest Gump movies. Uh, he's an iconic character for a reason, you guys, and he, he's more than earned the number seven spot on this list. Number six, Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. I have good news. Oh? Keiko has made a decision designed to increase her happiness. She has canceled the wedding. She what? Cancel the wedding? You know, of all the great episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, my favorite is a somewhat more obscure episode called Data's Day. It follows Data throughout his day as the only artificial life form among a crew of biological organisms and his attempt to fit in with and understand them. Now, you wouldn't think a character who has no emotions of his own would be easy to relate to, but actually it's very easy to relate to Data. He's an outsider whose greatest desire, which isn't desire and emotion, oh well, you have, to, you have to let him cheat a little, is to be normal, just like everybody else. Even though he's infinitely smarter and more capable than any humanoid member of the crew of the USS Enterprise, he longs to feel the inner richness of their emotional world. I love the idea of a character who's on the surface uh, the superior of everyone around him, but who secretly longs to be more like his uh, inferiors because he recognizes that they have something truly special that he fundamentally lacks. The greatest thing about the way Data is played is that despite his lack of emotions, he's rarely portrayed as a cold character. Instead, he's played more as uh, inquisitive and curious, as well as always willing to help his friends, even though he lacks the emotional connection to them uh, that's so important to human bonding. It seems like a very confusing character when I lay it all out, but Data completely makes sense in the context of the show. You never really have trouble understanding his motivations or even feeling for him, despite his lack of basic feelings. Uh, this is a character that easily could have been uninteresting or unrelatable, but the way he was written in the show and the way he was portrayed by Brent Spiner makes him easy to love. Data is my pick for number six. Number five, Willy Wonka from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I'm letting my entire river. Please, I beg you, Augustus. Ah! Hey, ah! My ah! chocolate. Ah! Ah! My chocolate. Ah! My beautiful chocolate. Ah! Don't just stand there. Do something. 
Help. Police. Murder. I'm of course talking about the Gene Wilder version here, not that shit heap abomination of a performance by Johnny Depp. Uh, Wilder's Wonka is a hard character to even talk about in that he's hard to get a read on. Everything about his outward appearance and way of speaking makes him seem very whimsical and fun and charming. Yet there's also a dark side to this wacky candy maker, as evidenced by the fact that his factory seems to at least partially be designed to murder, or at least maim, small children. He's almost like a prototype for a, for a jigsaw from the Saw movies. He doesn't kill you, he puts you in a situation where you end up killing yourself, and yeah, I know they don't die, but whatever. Only Jigsaw is, is dishonest in comparison, because most of his traps are actually pretty difficult to escape, whereas the fate of the kids on the tour at Willy Wonka's factory are always just snares of temptation. Wonka even warns the kids that their behavior will have negative consequences, and only when he is ignored is the, tra is, is the trap uh, sprung. But it's a testament to Gene Wilder that even as he's wantonly allowing children to be maimed for infractions as minor as chewing gum, we still like him. He's just impossible not to like. He just fucking farts out whimsy and fun. Yeah, there's, there's a creep factor there, but he's really just a pretty damn delightful character to be around, and the film knows it. He's never cast as the villain, even though he does some pretty villainous things or at least leads people astray to temptations that he knows are going to hurt them, which is kind of odd, honestly, for a guy who peddles tooth-rotting candy for a living. You'd think a candy maker would be all about rewarding indulgence, but nope. He meets out a dark form of justice to those who let themselves uh, be led by temptation. I think Willy Wonka uh, is a great pick for my number five spot. Number four, the Joker from The Dark Knight. I thought my jokes were bad. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have my boy here pull your head off. How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. It's... it's gone. Heath Ledger's portrayal of the iconic comic book character, the Joker, is among the greatest performances of all time, and only your asshole friend who's in love with the word overrated will tell you otherwise. This is a character all about highlighting the hypocrisies of modern society and trying to show us uh, that for all our supposed progress, we are still ultimately a race of monsters whose true nature is held in check just barely by the social contract of a society that keeps us fat and complacent. He is a master of undermining the social order to show us just how quickly good men can be turned to evil. And in defiance of cinematic convention, he's the only villain in a superhero movie that I can ever remember winning. He turns Harvey Dent, the DA that everyone believed could clean up Gotham, into a murderous monster called Two-Face. In doing so, he also turns the public perception against Batman. Yeah, he might have been captured by the time the film's credits roll, but make no mistake, he proved his point to Batman and very nearly proved it to all of Gotham as well. And he does all of this while gallivanting around town dressed as a fucking clown, cracking bad jokes and making big philosophical speeches about the nature of mankind and our relationship to violence and evil. Some men just want to watch the world burn. I actually don't like that tagline for the Joker. In my opinion, I view him as a character who's not trying to make the world burn, but who's trying to show us that it's already burning and we're just ignoring the fire. The Harlequin of hate is a shoe in for the number four spot. Number three, Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. I'll tell you how, how I feel about school, Jerry. It's a waste of time. Bunch of people running around, bumping into each other. Got guy up front says two plus two. People in the back say four. Then the, then the bell rings. They give you a carton of milk and a piece of paper that says you can go take a dump or something. I mean, it's, it's not a place for smart people, Jerry. Holy fucking shit do I love this character. Not only is he the most infinitely quotable character in the history of ever... But he's like nothing else we've ever seen before. Sure, we've had sociopathic and self-indulgent characters before. Uh, Roger from American Dad is a good example. Um, but, but never have I seen a character that, that, like, that was like that, that comes from such a genuine place. 
Like, he's not a sociopath uh, because sentient life just inherently means nothing to him. He's a sociopath because he's seen countless realities and knows full well just how small and meaningless the lives of sentient beings or even entire planets are in the grand scheme of things. Even his own life seems to carry little meaning to him at times. Um, Yet, uh, there are still moments when Rick does the right thing. He's capable of love and even self-sacrifice. He might strangle your mom with her own intestines right before your very eyes and then burp and leave you a sobbing mess, or he might save your life and sell you some awesome alien drugs. You just never fucking know with Rick. And even though he's so volatile and so unpredictable, nothing he does ever seems out of character or against his motivation. It's quite a feat, I think, to create a character that is capable of, of nobility, but also capable of the darkest and most horrible atrocities, uh, but to still have his motivations make sense and the internal logic of the character still hold up to scrutiny. Rick Sanchez is an amazing character and definitely deserves the number three spot for pulling off such a crazy dynamic. Number two, Daria Morgendorfer from Daria. Daria, what about your goal? Um, I don't have any. Oh, come, Daria. You must have some goal. My goal is not to wake up at 40 with the bitter realization that I've wasted my life in a job I hate because I was forced to decide on a career in my teens. Now, I'm not a fan of coming-of-age stories, mostly because the stories rarely reflect my own life at all. But of all the characters on this list, I don't think there's one who I more personally relate to than Daria. And I used to get shit for watching this show growing up. People would tell me, that's a girl show. Well, it's actually really not a girl show. It's a show about what it's like to grow up smart in a world full of morons. Now, Daria could have just been a, a, a machine spitting monotone one-liners at hyperbolic idiots, and that would have been just fine as a character. But the writers of the show gave her uh, a much greater depth of character than that. She's ethical and principled, but she's not very involved. Uh, she's the ultimate non-joiner. She has no interest in belonging, no interest in joining causes or fighting for ideals. Uh, she's content to stay in her room watching trash TV and reading classic literature. She rarely ever invests herself into situations, but when she inadvertently becomes involved in a dilemma or scenario because of a third-party interference or some strange set of circumstances, she's almost always able to manipulate things to her advantage or at least find some amusement in the ridiculousness of her fellow human beings. Uh, now, she's the least proactive character on this entire list, and you would think that maybe that would make her less interesting. But at least for me, the desire to be left alone uh, to her own solitude is very relatable. And her ability to turn unfortunate situations to her advantage, or at least find some way to have fun in them and maintain her own sanity, is also very relatable, especially when I think about myself at her age. Uh, Daria is the only coming-of-age style story that I really like. And it's because Daria is the character most like who I was when I was a teenager. Uh, so for that reason, Daria definitely deserves the number two spot on this list. And my number one favorite character in all of TV and film is... <laughs> Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek, The Next Generation. Yep, two from Star Trek in here. I have not been able to isolate the problem, sir. I might make a mistake. Yes, you might. But that does not alter your duty to me and to this ship. Now, do you know how to formulate a premise? Yes, sir. Then formulate this one. How do I deal with Commander Riker and the Hathaway? I will await your answer on the bridge. And Commander, it is possible to commit no mistakes still lose. Now, if Daria is the character most like me on, the, on this list, then Captain Picard is the character most like what the best parts of me deeply aspire to be. Now, he's not the friendliest person in the world, but his kindness and his compassion are very deeply rooted into him. He keeps a clinical distance from those around him, never allowing himself to bond with other people, uh, even though he cares very deeply about all of them. 
He just knows that if he were to form deep friendships with the crew of his ship, it would compromise his ability as a leader and therefore endanger all of the people that he cares about. Uh, he is ever the diplomat, always looking for the peaceful resolution to conflict, even to the point of risking his own life or the lives of his crew to do it if he believes that it serves the greater good. But if, if the peaceful options are all exhausted, then kiss your ass goodbye, because once he does commit to violence, his reluctance vanishes, and he's perfectly willing to fuck your shit up. He's like a model of self-discipline. He's very principled in his behavior and very selfless. And even though all of that is true, he's still definitely kind of a jerk. He's not the best at relating to those around him, and he can be standoffish. If you served under him, you'd never mistake him for your buddy. You would know damn well at every moment that he was an authority over you, but a tirelessly fair one, willing to stand up for even just one member of his crew if they're being threatened, even when those doing the threatening are Starfleet admirals who outrank him. There's a certain uh, sadness to the character, and it all seems to stem from the fact that he has to maintain this sort of clinical aloofness towards matters that uh, he's obviously not genuinely aloof towards. He lives in a sort of self-imposed isolation from those around him because he knows he must be detached. Even though it's plain to see that he's not truly detached and that he actually cares very deeply for all those around him and under his protection, uh, he still believes that if he were to let his stoicism slip, he would not be as effective as a leader. He knows that people count on him and he sacrifices a good deal of who he is inside to see to it that their confidence is never misplaced. Ethical, smart, eloquent, and always standing firmly on his core principles, Captain Picard is my favorite character. If you enjoyed this list, I ask that you give this video a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed, please do so. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you keep on watching. I'm The Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out.